Welcome to video number 16 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahey, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Tourism's environmental impacts, including those on land, water, and air, plants and animals, and diverse ecosystems, come from three sources. One is everything the tourism industry does to develop its infrastructure, facilities, and products. Next is everything it does to operate them profitably by attracting and satisfying tourists. And then there are those created by the attitudes, behaviors, and actions of the tourists themselves. Among tourism's most important positive impacts are its ability to educate tourists about the environment and deepen their appreciation and concern for it. Trained tour guides and site interpretationists are keys to this effort. As a result, tourists are demanding better stewardship by businesses in all four sectors of the tourism industry. This new generation of environmentally aware tourists ranges from green tourists who are vocal about their expectations of environmental best practices, whether they're staying in a deluxe hotel in Dubai or scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef, to ecotourists who take their demands into the more remote and pristine corners of the world. When the primary attractions or tourist settings at a destination are based on environmental resources, local people learn to value their environment and take better care of it. In this regard, tourism helps promote conservation of natural resources such as coral reefs, rainforests, and wildlife because they are now seen as assets that earn revenue for the community by generating entrance fees and creating jobs and small businesses. In many destinations, a special tax or surcharge is included in local fees that is dedicated to financing local conservation and preservation programs. National parks have achieved great success in preserving and showcasing the natural beauty and biodiversity of many incomparable sites around the world, as have programs such as UNESCO's Man in the Biosphere and its World Heritage Sites for Nature. In addition, there are many other parks, marine reserves, and protected areas that can serve the environment and provide a setting for many of tourism's favorite outdoor activities. Without tourism to lobby for these protected areas and provide a significant portion of their funding, much less of these environmental treasures would be set aside and supported by local communities. As the recognition and emphasis on environmental resources became a major thrust in many destinations worldwide in the last quarter of the 20th century, the tourism industry responded by developing concepts that would reduce the many impacts it was placing on the environment during development and operations. Among the best known and widely practiced are ecotourism, responsible tourism, and sustainable tourism. Other related concepts are adventure travel, low impact tourism, nature tourism, green tourism, endemic tourism, indigenous tourism, and village tourism. A number of high profile organizations have been founded to develop and promote these concepts such as the International Ecotourism Society and the Adventure Travel Trade Association. Tourism's three main negative impacts on the environment are its physical impacts, pollution, and degradation of natural resources. As tourism continues to develop and grow everywhere, it involves a great deal of construction, from clearing land and building infrastructure for the development of lodges and resorts, to opening ski runs and hiking trails, to widening roads, expanding airports, and dredging seaports, that often transform the physical character of the environment. Some tourism businesses operate in a green, responsible, and sustainable manner. Others look for short-term profit and ignore environmental best practices. Governments are also guilty of environmental neglect when they pass laws, some with many loopholes, yet fail to enforce them or eliminate exemptions doled out as political favors. When tourism development clears land, it often causes deforestation, as resorts, ski lifts, highways, and golf courses are built to support tourism. In doing so, it can remove valuable foliage, destroy habitats, disrupt migration routes, and consume huge amounts of water, all of which exert negative impacts on the environment. Water is essential for all life forms, but is becoming scarce in many cities and on many islands. Tourists worsen the problem since they often use much more water per day than the typical local person, and attractions such as golf courses and theme parks use large amounts of water 
for their operations. During tourism planning, communities must make wise decisions in regard to the type of destination they allow to be developed based on the current and future capability of their natural resources. Tourism used to be touted as the industry without smokestacks, which is still true in theory, but it is also true in fact that tourism can be a major source of pollution. Among those attributed to the tourism industry are air, noise, water, sewage, and solid waste pollution. Ships, boats, buses, RVs, snowmobiles, and other vehicles, both on-road and off-road, contribute to air and noise pollution, as well as oil and chemical pollution. Lodging and dining facilities are often responsible for additional chemical pollution. Littering is another problem that despoils the environment, as is architectural and visual pollution allowed by ineffective building codes, as well as ribbon development along roadways allowed by improper planning and ineffective zoning laws. When properly planned and operated, tourism can be a sustainable source of revenue in destinations that might otherwise turn to extractive industries that pillage their environment. Examples of overfishing and unsustainable logging are found in many parts of the world. But tourism must do its part also, or it will damage the very resources that tourists come to see and in effect kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Establishing and adhering to the physical carrying capacity within each destination, which is one of the topics in the next video, will help limit the negative environmental impacts of tourism. Now I invite you to watch video number 17, Three Tourism Carrying Capacities. Thank you.